Is heartache a real pain? Can a broken heart really break? And can people die from a heartbreak? I'm gonna tell you the story of Emily, a 56 year old nurse who had a bad heartbreak. I mean, a really fucked up one. Stay tuned to learn all about the broken heart syndrome. Hello people, welcome back to Chatterdox. I'm Dr. Tor and I'm an internal medicine physician. In this channel, we believe that learning about health does not have to be boring. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on the notification so you won't miss anything. The chest pain began during a gathering with her friends a few days after her traumatic divorce. They got together to help Emily cope with the situation. Well, evidently, it wasn't working as she was having chest pressure and heavy breathing. Indigestion, she thought. She tried to walk it off until a reminder came in the form of a slamming pain that shot up her chest and into her neck. She tried some Tums with no luck. Emily stayed in the party, occasionally breathing heavily with a tugging sensation in her heart. When the symptoms slowed, she thought that the worst had passed. So she kept listening to her friends. Uh, your husband is a piece of shit. He should go fuck himself for the rest of his life. Just regular post breakup stuff that everyone knows is not gonna help at all. She pretended to be feeling better, but deep inside, she was in a very intense SHUT THE F UP EVERYONE mood. After she finished her brunch, she dished her friend and didn't say a word about her chest pain. She finally decided to drive to the hospital, wondering how every other mental pain can be ignored when you're having a physical one. As she was walking to the ER, the pain grew unbearable. In the emergency room, her EKG showed evidence of a heart attack. Her blood troponin was sky high, which further confirmed the diagnosis. Troponin is an enzyme inside the heart muscle that spills into the blood during a heart attack. And it's very specific for diagnosing this condition. She was rushed into the catheterization lab where she underwent cardiac and geography. That's when an interventional cardiologist inserts catheters in the blood vessels and then finds and opens up the blockages. But surprisingly, they didn't find any blockage in her heart vessels. Further imaging, including an echocardiogram, which is the ultrasound of the heart, found that she had heartbroken syndrome. Now, what is broken heart syndrome? Despite a name that conveys cartoon images or something that you may see in a 15 year old Facebook post. Broken heart syndrome is a real condition. It's also known as stress cardiomyopathy or Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. And no, Takatsubo is not the name of another lame ass attention seeking doctor who discovered this disease. It's a Japanese word for octopus traps that resemble the pot like shape of the striking heart. Or maybe the Japs could be fucking with us and it may mean anything like even when you nuke us, we can rise again, killing you from inside with a fucking heartbreak. When it hits, a part of the heart temporarily enlarges and doesn't pump well. Although the symptoms and initial workup is compatible with heart attack, and it's sometimes even referred as a heart attack syndrome, but it's actually not a myocardial infarction, which happens due to blockage of the coronary arteries that supply the heart muscle. In which case, usually a blockage will be found with catheterization. Now, sometimes stress and psychological trauma can cause physical symptoms like headache, GI problems, chest pain, even with radiation to the left arm, which is a well-known sign of heart attacks, or many other issues. This is what doctors call a psychosomatic condition. Psychosomatic. Get it? Meaning that the origin of the symptoms is psychological. They're usually benign and can be controlled by treating the underlying psychological issue. But this broken heart syndrome is no psychosomatic shit, my friend. It's much more serious. If you're having chest pain after some major stress, the arrow to your heart could actually break it. What are the symptoms? As I said, the most common symptoms of this syndrome is chest pain and shortness of breath. It can strike someone with no history of heart disease like Emily. Women and mostly postmenopausal women are much more likely than men to experience this condition. The trigger could be stress caused by physical illnesses such as severe infection, pheochromocytoma, a condition of tumoral overproducing the fight and flight hormones like adrenaline, or severe emotional stress like the death of a loved one or divorce. But it's not always stress that's causing this condition. Sometimes shockingly good news such as winning the lottery or even divorce can cause this problem. Or if you're having a shitty run of luck, you can have it with no previous triggers. The exact mechanism for this disease is still not well known, but a massive surge of some 
fight or flight hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine, which is the same as adrenaline and noradrenaline, can be playing a central role. The excess amounts of these chemicals, when released directly by nerves that stimulate cardiac muscle cells, have a toxic effect and can lead to decreased cardiac muscular function or stunning. Now this is the heart, it's stunned. <sighs> Furthermore, this epinephrine surge triggers the arteries to tighten, which raises the blood pressure and places even more stress on the heart. It may also lead to spasm of the coronary arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle. This impairs the arteries from delivering adequate oxygen to the heart muscle. Together, these events can lead to congestive heart failure, which is failing pump function of the heart and lower blood output with each beat. Like if this is a normal heart, boom, boom. Boom. Everybody put your hands in the air. Boom. 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 A diseased heart will be like, Pleh. Pleh. yeah, not the best way of describing it, but I mean, how did we treat Emily? The treatment of Takatsubu cardiomyopathy is generally supportive in nature, and it is considered a self-limiting disease. In many people, the heart function normalizes within weeks to months. Actually, there are no internationally agreed protocol for treatment of this condition, which once again reminds you that no one cares so much about you being heartbroken, my friend. Emily's lifestyle has changed a little since her experience with the broken heart syndrome. First of all, she decided not to listen to her friend Jackie's remedies, which contained a lot of alcohol and cocaine. Secondly, daily exercise is part of Emily's prescription for healthy living, and she is excited to take part in the American Heart Association's heart walk. Well, actually she's not. I just made it up. But I hope she's doing some shit like that. And third, she's keeping a closer watch on her own stress level. Every day she tries to retreat herself to a quiet place during the day to decompress. She practices mindfulness and meditation to continue her quest to develop inner peace. Stay flexible to what changes life brings to you. Also, take the time to enjoy your life. Enjoy your friends, family, pets, nature. It's really the simple things that matter most. Manage your stress however you want because it is a silent killer. Despite the grave initial presentation, most of the patients survive the initial acute events with a very low rate of in-hospital death or complications. Once a patient has recovered from the acute stage of the syndrome, they can expect a favorable outcome and the long-term prognosis is excellent for most. In other words, come on girl, it's not the end of the world. It's gonna pass just like all the other pain and happiness that you had in your life. Rarely, more serious short and long-term complications can happen that must be treated. They include congestive heart failure and very low blood pressure and less commonly blood clots in the heart, which can in turn travel to your brain and cause a stroke. They got together to help Emily cope with the situation. She tried to walk it off until a room. Oh shit. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button below and also share this with your loved ones. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch my other videos here and here. Dr. Tor out.